Hello, Confidence. Welcome to This Week in Net. Hello. Thank you. Uh, for those who don't know, can you explain to us your job at Cloudflare? So my job essentially is teaching people how to use our developer platform. We have loads and loads of products and sometimes it can get confusing and you don't know what to use and when to use what. So my job is teaching people how to use this product and I do videos on YouTube and all of that stuff. So developer advocacy, teaching people how to get the most of Cloudflare's developer platform. You actually did a video about the topic we're discussing today, containers, that is on our YouTube page, the Cloudflare Developers YouTube page. People can check that out specifically there if they want the more in-depth technical perspective there. You do great content for sure. Yeah, thank you. And you should definitely get subscribed if you haven't. So go check out our Cloudflare Developer channel on YouTube and get subscribed. Exactly. And where are you based? UK? Yeah, I'm in the UK. I'm in a city called Birmingham. It's about an hour away from London. Done. So yeah, it's quite sunny today. It's been hot for the last couple of weeks. Last week was super hot, but this week is even bearable for me. Anyway, some people love it when it's hot. I personally don't. I like it when it's a bit cooler. But yeah, the weather is lovely. It's great outside today. It's really hot in Lisbon today, this Friday. <laughs> it's really hot. It's even hotter than usual. So really summer. Do, do you yeah. like it when it's hot or you prefer it when it's cooler? I prefer not too cold, not too hot. Although, to be honest, I'm good with cold weather. About containers, uh, the blog post we, we had this week, containers go public in the beta, the public beta. Uh, perspective for those who don't understand what is containers and why is containers so relevant to developers can you explain to us a bit what it, that is yes yes i can so if you've ever used docker or podman on linux you have used container so docker has the containerization platform and the idea is that you have an application you want to get deployed somewhere but you have the application packaged with all of its dependencies both like uh, like programming language libraries and also system libraries packaged in a container that is in Linux environment essentially. And then that can be deployed on any computer. And because it has everything it needs to get going, you can deploy this to any server anywhere in the world. And it's going to run reliably because it has everything it needs in a self-contained box, so to say. So that's, uh, that's the problem container solved because dependencies, especially across operating systems and hardware can lead to lots of issues when building applications. So containers was a technology developed to ensure that I have everything I need for this application to run. And then when I send it off somewhere, it has all of the dependencies for it to go. So we've brought that technology into Cloudflare workers. And this means that applications you could not run on workers before is now possible because we're giving you access to Docker containers and then you can bring those applications or workloads to be run on Cloudflare. One example of this is libraries such as FFmpeg. It's a Linux system binary and it's going to be difficult to get that running instead of workers itself. But with containers, this is a workload like you can run way easily. And there's so much more use cases, like way more use cases uh, you can think about file systems, uh, running legacy apps like Java or Go or Rust, for example. These are some of the use cases that containers on Cloudflare Workers makes possible today. Uh, makes sense. And uh, for those who are not familiar with our developer platform and what developers typically need, uh, one one of the things that surprised me was the excitement from the developer community about this. Uh, so this really unblocks a lot of things for developers, right? How do you saw like the excitement online about this? So why are developers so excited? Oh my God, it was, it was so heartwarming to see that people really wanted this. It's been long coming, like developers have been requesting for this because while JavaScript is great and you write JavaScript on workers, but you are limited to only stuff that can be done in a JavaScript land. Containers completely changes that game and opens up the, the landscape to any application you can possibly imagine can be run on workers. So it, it's something that unlocks a wide range of use cases. And that's why developers were excited. Uh, for example, one of the demos I was able to get running on container is a, a full Linux desktop environment. So like a full Linux computer running inside of containers. And it means that you can access this environment from any web browser and you have access to a full Linux desktop. And that's that's pretty awesome. It's just a demo, but it goes to show you that there's a lot of powerful things you can do using containers. And people were just so excited about it. I'm sure we're going to be seeing really 
crazy apps in the next couple of days to weeks that will be built on workers. So I'm excited to see what people build using containers on workers. Last week in the show, I had Kenton Varda. He is the initial builder of workers and he talked about AI. So people can check that episode out if they want to see the coding and AI and what someone really experienced and things about it. But he also talked a bit about containers and also how the way Cloudflare is doing is bringing a lot of excitement as well because it's a bit different from what others have been doing. It also uses the fact that we have this global network and we are already have this ecosystem. So that definitely makes this container's announcement from Cloudflare uh, specific and unique in a sense, right? Yeah, and you just reminded me about something. So speaking of which, lots of people are building AI-powered applications or experiences for the already existing applications using agents and MCP clients and servers. And Cloudflare is like the perfect place to build MCP or AI-powered experiences. One of the things that AI agents can do is generate code or build apps and containers is just like a no-brainer place to run those applications that have been generated so we're going to start seeing a lot of integrations in fact last week sandbox like container sandboxes were was also announced in addition to containers where you can get your agent connected to the sandbox and tell it to go run the application he has generated inside of a sandbox and he has like the full environment to do everything he needs to get done so as we see more of these AI powered experiences or agents or coding assistants being developed, containers is like a great place to have those applications running because it provides all of the sandboxing. And I'm sure that's why lots of people are excited about it because it makes it so much easier to get this kind of applications built. Do you have a demo to show us? I don't have an AI demo, but I do have a couple of demos to show you. This is the uh, this is the first application I was telling you about, and it's the first demo I'll be I'll be sharing. It's called WebTop, and the idea is that you're running a desktop environment, but on the browser. But this is powered by containers because the actual backend is running inside of a container instance. Okay, so this is loaded up. It is a in browser VNC clients because we're doing everything over the internet. So let's connect to the container instance. Okay. Okay. And okay. here we are connected to a Linux environment. And this is a full Linux desktop. So you can go open up a terminal. This is a terminal window. I can drag this, place this anywhere I want to. And let's do a quick cut. Okay. It is okay. an issue. So we're running Debian Linux, Debian 11, and Whatever it is you can do in Linux desktop can be done here because this is a full desktop. So for instance, I am going to go open up a browser. The browser installed on this uh, instance by default is Firefox. So this is Firefox. This is the first time Firefox has been opened. And oh, we can go open up YouTube. This is YouTube here. Just going to accept. And you can watch a YouTube video if you want to. Okay. Okay. Cloudflare okay. developers. Okay, I don't think I typed that correctly, but you get the idea that mm -hmm. this is a full Linux environment and whatever it is that you can do in a Linux desktop can be done here. And this is running on, over the web inside of a container instance. So it does show how powerful the container architecture is and it works really well with workers. Okay. Should I okay. go on to show you the other demo I have prepared, which is a bit more practical? And sure. Dynamic. All right, cool. I'm going to close this window and let's go open up. Uh, okay. Okay. I call this Wifsky. It is a web version of Jifsky. So if you create lots of GIFs, you okay. may have heard of the application Jifsky. It's available on Mac OS and Windows. And the idea is you give it a video and you can get that video trimmed and converted into a GIF. So this does the exact same thing, but it's running inside of a container as its backend. So let me go select a video file. I'm just going to go here. I think I have some of the videos I downloaded earlier. Yeah, this so okay. this is a video I got from YouTube and it's it's about I think it's really cool. So we're just mm. gonna trim the video. So I trim the end of the video. Okay. okay. We can leave all of the options as default. We're able to change the speeds to make it go to X faster, resize the output GIF. 
change like, the FPS, change the quality, change the loop. But I'm just going to hit the create button so that that gets created. So what's happening here is that the client, which is the web uh, client we're seeing here, takes the video we have selected from the computer, sends it to a worker. The worker forwards that to my container. The container I have here is running Rust. This is something you could not do previously instead of a worker. It's running a Rust web service that receives the video file and sends it to FFmpeg, which is a binary that you could not run on workers. FFmpeg converts that video into GIF and returns it back to the worker, which returns it back to the client. And you can see we have the GIF here and I can go download this and uh, we have that GIF downloaded. So all of this is, all of this was not possible on workers before, but with our containers, I... it makes all of this possible and there's so much more awesome things you can do using containers now. We can definitely see a use case there, but as you said, there's many more and there's many more videos as we start this conversation explaining some technical details that people can follow if they want to go more deeper into this area, right? Yes, definitely, definitely. If you want to run powerful applications that you could not a Go server or a Rust server, please reach out to containers. That's why we created it, to make it such that all of the workloads you could not run on workers for one reason or the other, it's now all possible using containers. And I think the best part of containers is that it in integrates really well into the workers platform. So if you need to use KV, for example, to store data, because it's also still running in Worker, you can connect it to KV, you can connect it to R2. If you need AI processing, you can connect it to Worker's AI, and you have all of these other integrations um, on the tip of your fingers for you to build really cool experiences with too. Yeah, really, really awesome uh, product. And using all of this in the Cloudflare ecosystem of all of what that means, and today it's many things, but all of that in the Cloudflare ecosystem, right? Yes, yes. And if you need a service somewhere else that Cloudflare doesn't provide, Tinas has access to the internet, so you can call a HTTP, like you can you can use it, you can call a HTTP service to a server somewhere to get the resources you need if it's a service we don't provide. But I'm sure we cover all of the services you may need to use, but if not, you have integrations to other services as well. One of the other announcements we did regarding developers this week, it's about building AI agents with OpenAI and Cloudflare. Uh, Cloudflare's agents as SDK, SDK uh, provides a seamless SDK execution layer for agents focusing on where they run, not how they think. Also a good addition, right? Well, yes, I have that blog post opened up because I planned to read it just after this call. I have something I'm building on agents, which will not be announced on this call, but hopefully next week on Twitter. Yeah, so it's, it's a really exciting announcement as well. For sure. Thank you so much, Confidence. Uh, this was great. Thank you. And Bye. that's a wrap. <laughs>